the ages past is Moses Storm, XP3 Warden, and Zach TM Miller, the man who's been doing all the work statistically for them. Mind you, it is a team game. Even if one player's got good stats, everybody's done something on the board. Pistol round's going to be straightforward. It's going to be a 3-2 split here for Denial. Three of them favoring B, so a slight stack to slow down any banana aggression as U5 actually looks to push that way right now with four. And they might time this really well as Finesse and JDM have headed back through CT spawn. And Warden is making noise over at A for Cutler and Hayes to call for... Uh, for the rotations, and that allows them to walk right into the site, but Lucky's in the back corner. He's gonna have to do big work right now. He pops out, he's been spotted, but he's still up right now. There he goes, finally Storm takes him down. JDM's gonna respond as he's already rotated back, so that slow frag doesn't allow them to get into the site as easily as they wanted, and a far smoke, they put that a little bit beyond the truck here, and that allows JDM to keep firing into the bomb site. Surprised they didn't smoke off CT on the pistol round, just for safety, but now they are in with the bomb down. Moses is gonna it up for Cubby right now, gonna get a frag on Finesse, nice shot. JDM and Cutler also rotating around. Moses with the double. Nice headshot on to, uh, pardon me, G uh, Hayes that time. And then the Cutler goes down as well. So Moses, really good round for him. And that's going to make it a 3K and one nothing United 5. Yeah, I like the strategy that Denial had. It's something that we see often on Inferno where you're going to have three men just push towards the B side first. Rotating back is a good idea because they're trying to sell a fake then stack up towards A in case uh, the terrorists decide to rush up after seeing that stack at B. The only mistake there was Lucky. Lucky at least should have had one or two kills before dying. And instead of uh, hiding back towards construction and maybe trying to play the retake, he tried to fight them where they he got cornered inside the new box. So I think he should have just waited back for his teammates to rotate back and take it together, which actually gave uh, plenty of time for U5 to set up after they killed Lucky and just defend that bomb. So that's why it was an easy uh, four uh, uh, victory, sorry, there for United 5 that last round. Denial playing a passive setup on the arch side right now. As you can see, Hayes falling back with that CZ-75. And U5's elected to go into A with the firepower. He's feeling out both bomb sites early, and I like the strategy. Warden's going to get a double, but Hayes and Lucky's going to pick up two, and that's going to make this eco round look really good. As now TM and XP3 take down Finesse and Lucky, and now Cutler comes around, and he's going to get one frag. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it takes some. It's the second dig. Yeah, good call over top of the box there. And now XP3 with the FAMAS does have bomb down, and he's got to win this round. He does so. U5 hang on by the skin of their teeth and they get the second round but that is a fantastic eco for Denial yeah it was somewhat of an okay uh, eco because it did go for full armor buy except for JDM JDM only went for a CZ but it worked very well for them when that stack inside A the CZ close range is just deadly right now and uh, whoever's playing inside the pit with that 5-7 uh, I think it was Lucky was able to line up two shots they had them very low uh, Denial against United 5 which close, uh, cut it really close on that one versus one situation. It should have been an easy round for United 5, who uh, overran that A bomb site altogether. Now, this early nade, it's going to hurt Warden as they're going to try to creep up towards the B bomb site right now for United 5. But once again, they're going to walk into a trap. The other thing to mention as well, Cutler's significantly lower than money than, uh, well, not too much significantly lower as uh, Finesse is down there as well. But they bought out a little bit of armor and nades last round, and that kind of hurt their economy despite getting so many frags. So they're going to be in a tight situation even to buy next round. I don't think they'll be able to fully afford everything. We'll see what happens as B is going to be in place of aggression. Storm and TM going to pick up a frag each before JDM finally responds into Warden. And now TM gets a second one into JDM. That cracks the bomb site wide open. Bomb is planted. But here comes Hayes and, uh, pardon me, Lucky to uh, rotate around and just see what they can do. Of course, this round's pretty much a lost cause. They are on another eco and already down pretty heavily as Storm takes down Lucky. And now Hayes will pop out from Kentucky. He gets one on TM. Good frag. That's going to help him out with his money situation and uh, force the T's to buy up one more gun. But that's probably about it as the bomb will continue to detonate. And Hayes just might fall back with the CZ-75. See if he can get one more exit. And he does. Good shot on XP. But there he will go down to Storm. So into the first gun round we go. 3 nothing. your score for United 5. And of course that's extremely important on the terrorist side. Yeah, Hayes did make good use there of that CZ. You saw him run at the end with his knife out because he probably ran out of bullets uh, because it's only 12-12 right now for the clips for that CZ. And uh, he got the kills that he needed. And like you said, there were important frags against United 5 because if you're looking at him so far, they're able to have full armor and full AKs. But if you look at the money situation, they're very broke. So this gun round is a very important for both teams. So no matter what, even though it's 3 nothing right now for United 5, Denial played some very good pistol rounds there in round number two and three. Yeah, they really did. And in fact, the top fraggers on either team each only have three frags. So despite having pistols, Denial's definitely keeping up in that regard. And that might pay off heading into the gun round. So far, it's passive. Five players stacked up in banana right now for U5. 
but not a lot of aggression as smokes are out on both top middle and at the connector. They are going to go though, so no fakes going on for uh, E5. These guys are committed tonight. No, Warden gets the opening frag, Cutler drops, but Finesse firing through the smoke from CT will respond into him, but they've smoked off the schools and that won't allow Finesse to come out from uh, construction. He's actually going to get naded up significantly as he drops down to uh, just 21 HP. And it's a four on four situation. Bomb is down. JDM's got an off, and he's gonna try and just sit out here backside on construction. Actually, I take that back. I think he's uh, pulled out back to CT. Lucky's gonna go right through the smoke, get one on TM. Nice shot by him, but XP3 responds into Haze. And now we sit three on three. Bomb takes, make it a three on two. Pardon me, as Lucky now drops. Finesse, the last man standing. And he is moving his way back and forth to try and get more, but XP3 picks up a quick hat trick from the back closet of the site. And that is gonna make it four nothing. The first run, gun round also goes the way of U5, and that hurts for denial. Yeah, that's probably going to put them in a save round if they're going to go for a pistol armor. Uh, we, of course, going to see a few pistol. It all depends if they're going to spend that extra $1,000. No, they're, listen, they're just going to go for a pistol save. I kind of find it weird of how they ran that uh, gun round there for Denial. I mean, it was default, but uh, the AWP played very passively by JDM instead of trying to peek out first. So they don't really know where U5 was going. Nobody's really looking down towards middle. Nobody's really spotting towards alt mid. So they really don't know where U5 were re really uh, rushing to or working towards either side. And U5 just decided to run inside B with a five-man push, and that's how they got overrun. Uh, on that last round. Moses picks up Lucky in apartments. Patience was a virtue there. They stacked up on the stairs and he got a little bit over aggressive trying to peek out and get location on the enemies. And that means they have a one nothing advantage again for the terrorists. But Moses and XP3 actually, as I look at it, are on yep. one and nine HP. So really, you might as well combine them to call it a four on four. And they haven't really committed this round either. They've pushed up in a, into apartments, gotten that pick, but they've fallen back as they're not happy with the numbers game. Warden's going to take down FNS at Banana, pardon me, Finesse at Banana, though. And that will allow them to try and rotate back to B. In fact, B's wide open as they've already rotated over to the A. Cutler's on his horse, getting back through CT spawn right now, trying to get over there. But the bomb's still stacked up in middle. I don't think, to, uh, pardon me, that uh, United 5 is aware they have a free passage. And Hayes now also going to head back through library and try and get in position to swing either way based on the call. And it's still passive, but they are going to walk this right into B. No smokes out, though. Warden's going to be the first man in. He's your entry fragger. He will spot up on Cutler. He will get the frag. Nice shot there as he takes him down to the back of the truck. And that will allow for an easy plant. And once again, Denial in a rough situation. And it looks like Hazed actually might just hold on to his CZ-75 as he lurks through the apartments looking for anyone. But he's not going to find it as JDM is going to rotate around through Banana. So another round will go the way, surely, of uh, United 5, barring any miracles. And that will make it five to nothing. Yeah, the way they're going to set up, they're just going to look for exit kills right now. If they're lucky, they might get a kill onto most of the next three, as you mentioned. Very low right now, but these guys are playing it smart. Speaking about United 5, and they still managed to get the headshot onto XP3. He's going to be mad out of that one. Uh, I was just about to say the ones with the full HP are the ones leading the charge, and somehow they peek through and they still get the kill onto XP3. Could have been dangerous at the beginning of the round, though, as it did have the crossfire set up inside the hallway. Aggressive push, one inside boiler, one at the edge of the hall. Hallway there for Team Denial. The crossfire, crossfire star did work, but somehow the registry didn't come in their favor as they weren't able to take down those two first kills. That would have probably changed things around for the whole round uh, for Denial there, picking up two guns, maybe forcing United 5 to fall back inside B and pick up two AKs left behind. Uh, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, it's still going to be a 5 0 score in favor of U5. And keep an eye on JDM with that op. He was massive on it with, on, uh, on Nuke against Savage, I believe it was, when they went into the overtime matchup. So he's going to be playing here on the arch side at top of the middle as the aggression in alt mid is pretty heavy right now from U5's. Not a lot of pushing, though. And in fact, they haven't even boosted up into Boiler as XP3 is in that position right now. If I can lock it over on him. Yeah, he's finally gone through the window, and he's going to just peek it out on the stairs and he will actually flash up onto the truck side of A. So it looks like they are finally going to commit. Smokes are not actually covering off this crossfire. I take it back. One went over the roof. That will push JDM back into the far side of Moto. And that will allow them to try and go truck side and work in. Good smokes, actually, as you can see from Cutler's perspective. No vision whatsoever into the balcony. But there it is, JDM. I talked about it. There's that incredible off as he takes down two in Warden and XP3 through the bomb site. Good play, and now Cutler's going to respond with a third one into Moses. Swole finally takes down Hayes, but Lucky and Cutler do the rest of the work. If you spell your name backwards, you're definitely a good player, and those guys both pick up a frag there. <laughs> and it's 5-1.
Yeah, I gotta say, that was a great round there for JDM. I'm not sure I wasn't looking at his point of view. I don't know if he saw him through the smoke or if he just randomly spammed and got the two kills. But that's a strat that we see often as well uh, these days for the terrorist side. At least when you're trying to execute the A strat. You're gonna love those smoke grenades and bounce them off the walls. And to basically smoke out the truck side, uh, the graveyard entrance, and also that little crack between default boxes and the inside side. Basically, what that... What that helps is to let the bomb planner move in and not plant at a default spot but just to the left of it so nobody's gonna be able to spam it there because they can't really see and they don't really know about that spot yet and then once it's planted they basically fall back and play the bomb from the boiler room and from middle instead of pushing through inside the pit and taking control that way because when you try to do that you're out in the open against people up at the library nonetheless you're pushing towards a again with a 5-1 score for u5 Absolutely, and they're going to go right through the smokes at top, middle, and Hayes and Lucky are quickly going to take down XP3 and TM, so early advantage again for Denial, and Lucky picks up a second one into Warden on truck side. Moses now underneath the balcony, though, takes down JDM on a rotation. Good play by him. That at least gets one frag on the board for U5, so five on, or pardon me, four on two the situation. As we see Moses now with the bomb working through apartments. Nice shot on Lucky in Graveyard. Good awareness, good peek, knew exactly where to look. But he will get answered into by Hayes coming out from the bomb site. Nice shot. Storm, though, already in pit, takes down Hayes. And he's still going to try and make a case to get this round as Finesse is in the back of the site, trying to find an angle on him as he works around the backside of the statue. Where's his teammate Cutler inside apartments? This is a perfect opportunity for a flank from him. If Storm stays distracted long enough, Finesse has to force a peek here. Try and make him do something, but Storm's worked out, and he's got around. No, he misses on the wall, and now it's Cutler. Where are you? Where are you, Cutler? There it is. His teammate drops. He could have been a little quicker on that, but he does get the frag, and they will secure the round. Yeah, he went for the bait to secure the round, so that was actually smart there to actually try to get some rounds back there for Denial. And uh, U5 basically tried to do the same strat as I just mentioned before with those smokes, but the thing is, I think Denial knows about that now. So they actually plant these right in the corner of what used to be uh, motor boxes uh, inside Inferno, if you guys remember 1.6 days. So uh, he was just playing that area, just looking down towards that crack. If he anybody tries to plant there, all he sees is a dome and an easy shot there. So United 5 has to change their strategies around to try to work this A bomb site. Now they're forced to save as well, sorry. Absolutely, and a stack actually up on uh, B right now. Three players in banana for uh, for denial. Cutler's actually going to get aggressive with the smokes at the bottom and allow Finesse and Lucky to rotate back. But it's also interesting, they're being more passive here on a save than they have on all the gun rounds. They've pretty much committed a four to five man push on each bomb site. No fakes like we normally see on Inferno and extending out the round clock as Cutler is going to mow them down in banana. He's got three already over to the pistol can't conclude on the final two tm down to 16 hp but that is going to be a fantastic job it allows the teammate to road rate straight over in finesse and he picks up one on tm at the top of banana and it's all on for matt dickens trying to do work and he won't find anything as finesse takes him down as well great spam there by cutler and that's going to make it here five to three so denial getting back into this relatively quickly yeah, nothing you can really say there for United 5 on that save round. Just P250s, trying to get some shots, trying to catch Denial off guard. But Denial played at uh, the angles and waited for the terrorists to just run into their crosshair and get those shots. So they couldn't even get make it past towards the banana or at least get a bomb plant down. But with the full save that they have, United 5 definitely has enough money to go for everything that they need. And surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly, they don't have an offer right now for United 5 because they don't really need it. The strats that they're executing right now involves a lot of smokes which would make it actually worthless to have an AWP try to get any entry frags right now. So AK strat, really smart right now for United 5 uh, with the way that they're playing. Back to the full guns, and uh, again, once once more from Denial, they smoke off the bottom of Banana and try and get a little bit aggressive on it. And you can see they're just taking turns spamming away through that smoke. As Hayes is going to sit back and just try not to get taken down. He's pretty much alone at B once again. As you can see, Finesse is rotated around to join JDM on the arch side. So four players at A for, uh, for Denial. And so far, no commitment from U5 as they just sit here on the T-stairs waiting for something to happen, waiting for an opportunity to push into a bomb site, and the smoke finally disappears on the bottom of Banana, and that might be an invitation as we see four now make it five as Storm's going to slowly lurk in behind, heading toward that position on the B bomb site. Cutler's going to be there just in time. You see he's gone, but there it is. Here's the entry. Good flash, though. TM forced to fall back. They can't get into the site. He's did very well with the lay thing, and he will get the first frag with TM. Picks him up in return, and now Cutler coming around. 
from the, uh, pardon me, from construction with JDM are trying to do work, but again, they smoke off the electrical schools, and that's going to delay anything else from a rotation and a retake from the CT side. Bomb finally goes down. Once again, they planted on the right side of the site at Cubby, interestingly, as most people do go toward that uh, barbecue. But again, barbecue is a very wide open spot, and if you don't have full tight control or time, it's not often not worth the risk. Storm's gonna get another one on Finesse. TM gonna get one on Lucky. Storm gets another a second onto JDM. Now Cutler finally responds and gets one onto TM, wow. and XP3 will finish him off. So very good sight hold from U5. Yeah, and if one thing you guys don't know what Sato Kiss is talking about when he means barbecue, it's the grill spot just uh, by the pool. And pool is actually playground, depending on how you call it when you're playing Inferno. But uh, grill or barbecue is the default spot we're going to plan inside the Counter-Strike Go 101. But um, I got to say, the way that Hayes has played the banana, I don't think he should have been spamming through that smoke. Because they know that he was playing close. So they were just waiting for that smoke to dissipate. And with him playing so close up, they knew that not many people are going to play towards B. That's why they opted to rush towards that B bomb site after. And they went fast enough to actually not give enough time to Cutler to rotate back from that stack that he had with his teammates at the cross of middle. So if anything, he should have just held back or played an angle, get a few kills, and then give that chance for the rotation to come. But with the way that he's spamming and forced to reload, he, would ha he was only forced to fall back inside the site after when United 5 knew that not enough people were inside that B-bomb site. So uh, another disadvantage there. And again, with all those smokes that they're throwing, not enough chances for GDM to get any off shots there on a retake. This round started off a little bit differently from most of the ones we've seen as U5 did fan out completely across the map. In fact, they had the uh, bomb uh, thrown down just outside the entry to uh, upper apartments. So they were looking for picks, they weren't playing passive, but now they've picked it up and they're rotating through banana. Now they're back at middle though and he's just found them and he's going to get a quick triple. Nice play by him as he takes down three at bench in XP3 Storm and Moses. So now TM and Warden are going to have to go clutch back and TM's going to get Cutler through the smoke. He was spotted just briefly, but quickly returned fire and took his opponent down. Meaning that uh, they are in a 2 on 4, but again, as I say, anything, it changes, and JDM with his lovely Amisana, I can never say that. Asimov? As as there you go. His op, his beautiful op, he's going to get two. Yeah, I'm you done. can't really call it the big green anymore, right? It's just going to no, be the big white yeah. and orange. It's, 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 not it's all easy. changed now. You got you to gotta keep up with the times now, Sado Kiss. But, uh, you know... Uh, United 5, the amount of times that they try to work towards the bomb site, it didn't work, and they realized that all their rounds that they've won have been Oregon's Ecos or working towards the bomb site. They tried it again this time, but Denial just had the better placements on that round and just got the better gunfight this time. On the same round, I'm just going to take this as it's going to be a push up towards Banana. They're all going to get denied as three of them are pushing down towards Banana for uh, Denial and uh, easy kills there, as now we finally have a game in our hands, Sato Kiss, because now United 5 are going to be forced on this, are, are going to be able to buy, sorry, and uh, Denial not losing any guns, they're going to be able to buy the round after, but uh, if United 5 wins the next two, they're looking maybe at a 10-5 um, score overall to, to end the half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, United 5 have done a tremendous job on uh, on the T side. We talked about how CT is slightly advantageous, and Denial really needs to pick up their socks. They can't give up too many more if they want to have a chance. Mind you, really, with any of these teams in any given situation, it doesn't matter what side they're on. It matters how they're playing as a whole, And uh, but it's never comfortable heading into uh, on the T side on Inferno down. So uh, we'll see how they respond to that pressure right now as Lucky just rotating back around into the pit, trying to get better positioning. And the man who pushed through Boiler, XP3, gets spotted by Hayes. That's going to open things up early here for Denial. 5 on 4 TM at 32 HP as well for U5, so a little bit more advantageous than even the situation on the board looks. As now Cutler is going to take down Gordon and make it a second and a third into TM. Nice shot by him. I'm switching my name to Disco Dask, because man oh man, the backwards thing is definitely working for him. As Storm gets the only other frag for uh, U5, and now it's 6-6, six, six, so tie game, it's on. I have a and huge feeling you practiced that for like 20 minutes. I didn't see your name back or what, just, I've known it for years. Okay, maybe that's why. But <laughs> you know what? They changed one small thing for Denial in that last round on the CT side, and that made a huge difference. Basically, instead of having the offer trying to opt towards middle, they finally have GDM opting towards the B bomb site now as he's heading there again. And then if nobody's pushing up, he's going to watch that by himself, and he could just focus the rifles towards the bomb site. And that's why you saw Hayes getting those opening kills towards middle, forcing U5 on another the save and they're just playing a uh, great adaptation what? to U5's play right now. 
What a shot by Warden as he took down JDM, who was opping from Car and Banana. He dinked him on the first peak, and then knowing that he had him at low HP, just overwhelmed him with a strong push, and that drops down Ooh. the op. And now another frag, XP3 takes down Cutler, so already a Lurking. really good eco round here for U5, and they've got the op in the hands of Warden now as they pushed up to grab that. And that will allow them an opportunity to work into a bomb site. So things looking very good for U5 to pick up what might have been an unexpected, uh, unexpected round uh, statistically. But man, oh man, Ecos have been so common. Since ETS, I've casted more than enough. And what a flick shot by Warden. Takes the head completely off of Lucky. That chicken ain't running around. There's no laps left when he's decapitated. His life is truly gone as the bomb will be planted on A, and now Hazed and Finesse have to make a miracle to save what should have been an easier round than it has been. And that first pick on JDM has really paid off, and it's not going to do anything else as Storm and Warden do a fantastic job there. Great eco, and it all started with Matt Dickens taking uh, JDM down in Banana. Yeah, and they didn't even buy any armor for that round either, so that was a great round for United 5. Uh, basically, you're not supposed to get caught against pistols, especially if you have the advantage at Banana with an AWP uh, and a rifle to support you, but somehow they still lost that battle towards B, and United 5 definitely, even though it's a 7-6 score, these guys are on fire when it comes to the way that they're tapping their shots, so when they're going to switch over to the CT side, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how Denial is going to have to face against United 5's angle shots. Uh, I think it's going to be tough to play the T side. I could be mistaken, but I'm really seeing this still in favor of United 5's game. And that op is going to continue to haunt Denial right there as XP3 gets the shot through mid onto JDM. Five on four the situation. A still spamming away through the smoke. His aggression might actually really help Cutler right now. As you can see, he's pushed up underneath the pillars. And uh, they're going to think there's only one. No, never mind. They've already spotted Cutler. That nade was very intentionally bounced onto his feet. And he's down to 48 HP. But meanwhile, they're going to still get aggressive on the arch side. F and F. I keep wanting to call him FNS because that's what he also goes by. But Finesse takes down TM and also Moses comes back into him. So A is going to be the choice uh, of destination for U5. Nice shot by Storm. Well timed as well as he covers off the bomb planter. Lucky to drop. And now it is two on four. Denial. Once again, have to go clutch back. Moses going to take down Cutler. This is looking really good for U5. And now it's all on Hayes and through the smoke. He is going to be overwhelmed from gunshot. And Storm gets the frag. Eight to six on the T side. U5 doing absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you're not supposed to lose a player so early in the round as well. Now they're screwing over Denial in the money situation for the last round. Three for Mosses. Uh, make that four. Last one, probably only with a kit. Yet, it's going to be JDM, so the amount of times that he's bought ops and couldn't get any kills or any pigs towards middle, that's unfortunate for him there, and that's really screwed him in this whole uh, in this whole half. Oh, I'm sorry, he's got a Pamas there, uh, after all. But uh, I got to say that uh, their aggressive play towards Banana for that last round didn't pay off again. If you lose a player early in the round, it's just easy for the terrorist team to uh, overtake a site as a group, because you're looking at four or five versus two walking up into sites, and uh, the A site definitely was the easier one to take, because you have more uh, ways to split out from right after. So uh, good call there for United 5 after that XP3 pick. And now we're going to move on to the last round of the first half. I was kind of critical early on U5 for uh, being so aggressive on bomb sites, but it's definitely worked for them. It's not the typical sort of fake and play pick strategy we see on Inferno. Yes, they have patience to some extent, but when they commit, they fully commit. There's no, okay, we got one, let's rotate back. It's It's been pretty dominant in that way. And uh, like I say, if, it's, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And U5 is definitely playing very well with their strategy right now. Denial is going to be posted up here with 2 and B. That might be the spot to be as U5 is in Banana. The bomb's in the hands of Storm. They're still trying to work out. Find an opportunity. Butler's going to take down Gordon, though. And that's going to... Uh, oh, no, I lied. He's actually going to go all the way through here into B. And they are going to continue with the aggression. But S gets one on TM. But Moses and Storm pick up one each. JDM goes back into XP3. And Moses goes back into him. So trades across the board. Two on two now. The situation is lucky. He's going to get one. Maybe nice. Two. What a shot with him uh, there with the um, the FAMAS. Pardon me as I lost my words. But uh, quick defuse, no kit, but they've got all kinds of time. And that's going to make it an even half here. 8-7, but Denial was on the CT side, so they've got their work cut out for them. Yeah, Denial for the last round played uh, with uh, an, or an orthodox style, basically. Uh, they went for a very aggressive picture with FAMAS's close range uh, for at least uh, Lucky at the beginning and Cutler. Uh, but... Oh, sorry, it was Cutler that was playing towards B. But Lucky, the way that he got that pick inside B as well in that retake, he actually crouched through the smoke. 
and just aimed straight towards oranges, thinking that somebody was going to be there, and he guessed right. So they just gambled uh, for an aggressive retake before United 5 even had a chance to set up inside the site. Uh, so that was very good. Threw United 5 off. It made a very close end of a first half here with an 8-7 score in favor of United 5. Now, uh, the pistol round is even more important for other teams, uh, but now it's going to be hard for United 5. Are they going to go for a stack towards the B-bomb site? Uh, like Denial did in the piss round and then set up a, a metagame right after? Or is it just going to be an all-out push as well by Denial up mid and at Banana with the overpowered Glock pushes and uh, overtake a site? So uh, we'll see. The United 5 has to expect maybe a Denial uh, aggressive push as a group. And uh, the, the gamble is where are they going to stack towards uh, and what site is Denial going to go against. So right now, we have lost one of the players. Going to wait for him to come back. That is Cutler. And then we could resume here this second half. So I'm Van Silly. Along with me is Sato Kiss. We are your casters tonight for ESCA TV season number 16. Match of the week for United 5 and Denial. We are already in week number three. Oh, as time flies by, Sato Kiss, what do you think about this match so far? Not bad at all. I think U5 is definitely in the driver's seat, and they showed off some good commitment and teamwork on uh, on the T side. So I'm interested to see how their defense goes. Uh, last year, it seemed to me that they were uh, again really aggressive on their pushes as uh, as an attacking side, but as the defenders, they were a little bit sloppier. Uh, specifically on Dust Two, I remember TM constantly being aggressive on Catwalk. Obviously, this isn't Dust Two, so different map, but. Same players, and uh, he was very aggressive on catwalk. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And the times that he was aggressive, it seems like his teammates weren't. They were passive and not there to support him. So it put them into an early five-on-four situation. Little things like that make a big difference. So we'll have to see if U5's tighten it up a little bit on D. And uh, if there's a map that uh, promotes being passive, this is it. So we'll see how they approach it. Yeah, nonetheless, I think this is a great match overall. I got to give big props again and a big shout-out to Danal Esports uh, to come back for what is it the fourth or fifth time now in csgo i think uh i i thought that they've given up the last team that they sponsored i can't really remember who uh, it was actually it i was. by power uh that's it it was uh anger and company uh before even days joined back in the day so uh they sponsored with skadoodle i uh, joined easy k um anger and then suddenly, maybe about two days later, uh, they left and then joined I Buy Power and Denali Esports said, F that, we're done. But uh, now that you see such a big growth in the competitive play of Counter-Strike GO, it's good to see them back. One thing, though, as 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 we're waiting for this to happen again uh, as well in the second half, we do have a new team that's been sponsored as well. Uh, so we do have Savage that got sponsored by Ronin's or Ronin5. I checked out their bio on their website and it said, it doesn't matter how you call us, we prefer Ronin's or Ronin5, whatever you guys want to call us. So we'll call them both. So that means that Sato Kiss should not be afraid of calling them out. But a big shout out to them as well <laughs> for joining the North American Counter-Strike scene. Hopefully they'll be able to give, give some support and hopefully we'll be able to get some more uh, Counter-Strike events uh, as we do in Europe here in North America. It all depends on travels or whatnot, but if anything maybe we could develop our own community like the european has out there for their competition nonetheless though we're about to start a deep piss around in the second half again going through the roster rundown brought to you by ben q for united five storm moses xp3 warden and tm and for denial we got cutler hayes lucky jdm and finesse starting off on t side sato kiss please take the honor absolutely and so far things straightforward uh not looking like much of a stack here for uh for u5 tm to play passively at arches for a quick rotation but an aggressive aggressive play here from xp3 on banana as he was supported there by warden does give them the early frag and that means that the b push is going to be slowed down heavily and warden gets a beautiful shot on the lucky can't close out though onto jdm as he took it very low but ran out of bullets in the cliff and that allowed him to get one frag back into xp3 cutler's going to take down warden tm rotating around gets a double nice shot and that be, uh, finishes off the great start that they had from xp3's push and they get the first round they needed that round well Truthfully, I actually would say Denial needed that round a little bit more, but they get it, and 9-7 is going to be your score. So they, that's exactly what I talked about in the first round of the game. Uh, Lucky, who was playing towards New Box, he should have tried to stay alive as long as he could, but he died first. Warden was actually the second one to die, but by the time he died, everybody rotated uh, already over for United 5 into the B-bomb site. So it was great play for him for survivability and also to have them focus all their fire against the loot box and nobody was really watching angles. So now, uh, Denial is going to be on the save, but look at that. Finesse has a Nova as well. So these guys are out for money. Cutler with a Deagle armor. So um, 
they're going to be money screwed right now, uh, looking at the situation, uh, moving on to the third or fourth round, depending. I think their goal right now is just to try to get this bomb plot down so that it could buy in the third round. If not, we're probably going to see Galil's on fourth if they're not able to get any kills for the next few rounds. And interestingly enough, on T side, you don't have to need to get the bomb plant to buy in the third round. Sometimes it'll push you for the second, but they've already thrown that out the window. So I don't know if I fully agree with this strategy, as Moses sitting on the back side of the truck did spot up JDM, but unable to connect. And then TM gets his second one on Finesse. There it is. Moses finally takes down JDM. And now it's Lucky and Cutler. So yeah, there's no money going their way. They haven't done what they wanted to do at all as TM takes down Lucky. Finally, they get a response frag from Cutler. And he will go ahead and pick up that Nova as well as his Deagle. So uh, Superman Dad Ho is he's going to have to run around this map and take down four players if he wants to give any economy back to his team. And nope. it's, ooh, Warden didn't take the shot. I thought Warden would. But they're good just going to close it on him. They know he has a Nova, so I think they're just going to wait for it out. But that's expensive there for Cutler. I mean, he spent $1,800 just to get a Deagle kill, which is $300 there. So that was money not well invested there. And as well as $1,100 wasted by, uh, I think it was Finesse with that Nova. He couldn't get that close range kill. So, uh, you know, overall, though, if you're still looking at the scoreboard, I guess the money bonus uh, still evens things out there for Denial. So my calculations were a little bit off with the way that they bought. But if, uh, if some of them bought, maybe they all should have bought altogether. Nonetheless, uh, the round still comes in for United 5, 10 to 7 score. Warden going to get aggressive again. Interesting that uh, TM, I would have expected him to play a B with his similar style to how he plays Cat on Dust, but he is playing the arch side, or at least he was the last round, yeah, and it looks like he's there again. It's another spot where he can go for an early aggressive pick on the D side, so keep in mind if, uh, if he continues that, that's his traditional style, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Flash is heading over. That's going to catch out too. Slow denial down a little bit more as they are five men stacked up in banana, trying to get in the site. A few frags would do them a great deal of uh, good here right now, as with the bomb plant. So that's got to be their at least their uh, mandatory goal. If they could win the round. That would just be a bonus at this point. But XP3 is going to pop out with that Tomas and spray away. And one's going to pop out to support it. And the two of them will get all five of the denial players. There it is, 11-7. And by winning that pistol round and being ahead, heading onto the TCT side. Things are looking very, very good for United 5. Yeah, and that's where Denial right now are in a debate with JDM. Should I go for an op and small armor? But no, he's going to go for full AK. So I guess the way that they manage their money, they just want it. We're just planning no matter what, maybe to go for a gamble win on round number two. But if not, just go for full AKs in round number four. But uh, they still definitely have to win this round or at least get a few kills if they're going to go for a forest buy on the round after. But it uh, looks like things will be focused towards the A site uh, in this round number here. Uh, in this round over here, sorry, Zeno Kissed. Yeah, Cutler and Dazed already down, or pardon me, Hazed. Getting confused with our lovely I buy power captain. But uh, yeah, already down to 70, 70 HP. I work up middle flashes going off. They didn't smoke off either side though, but they are going to have JDM lurking behind, making sure no one's going to readdress the arch side situation. Moses falls back into the site. He's overwhelmed already and he needs to get repositioned. Does do so and manages to take down Lucky in wow. the second one in finesse as Storm gets one into Hazed and TM will get Cutler. So they are mowing Denial apart right now and JDM drops as well. The first gun round is a nightmare for Denial as it was on the first half. They lost the pistol round on both sides, and they lost the ensuing gun round. They are really struggling early on in the matchup. They made a great comeback, but it might be too little too late on this side now. I like the fact that they played very aggressively, though. I think it even caught United 5 off guard at some point, because they actually caught Storm with a nade in his hand. He had a smoke in his hand, even missed through it after he spotted his first opponent coming out of the halls. But nobody was looking towards that angle. They couldn't get the kill onto Storm. And even when they committed towards that uh, truck side, nobody was looking inside the pit to try to get that kill uh, against Storm, who loves to play that B site, or the, the A hole. Nonetheless, save round moved up towards middle to get it picked left and right. As we do have a, have a crossfire set of here by United 5. The last two will get picked off, and that is it. Another round coming in for United 5. And you, like you mentioned it, Sato Kiss, those guys, uh, when they went for the ground round for Denial, they didn't get a single kill, so that forced them on another save. And these are easy rounds right now for United 5. And I've called this before. They're just running into the angled positioning of United 5 right now and just getting picked off because United 5 are actually on point with uh, the way that they're tapping and flicking their shots today. Yeah, and the crossfires have been really good. Interesting to point out, though, if, uh, if you just press tab and take a quick peek there, Cutler's sitting at 17 frags, and up until the last round, oh, look at this, they're going to head right up. It's actually going to be aggression from uh, U5 that gets the better of it. I, well, 
I shouldn't say that. It's been an even trade as it went to three on three, but uh, they definitely delayed the push, and that's a good start. But what I was going to say is Cutler's actually keeping up with every fragger on U5, despite that they're almost uh, down by two to one ratio, 13 7 your score. But it's Finesse and JDM that are struggling. Finesse more so. He's only got five frags for the entire matchup, whereas the frag distribution on U5 has been very even. So a better team game. I would call out JDM, but he played so, so well for them in the last matches that they've had. It's hard to pick on him here. But man, well, Finesse has got some work to do. Yeah, if anything I could add as well as these guys are working towards the bomb side, JDM was also the op right now for den uh, for denial, and he's been forced in situations where he had to rotate every single time. The way that he's playing the AWP on CT side towards A, he didn't have a chance to shine. He always had to go on a retake, and when he's taking those retakes, he's getting flashed, he's getting smoked out, he cannot land those shots. Now he's going to try to be the op picker inside the A site, uh, and we'll see if it's going to work out for him on oh, the T side. Oh, what a flank by Moses, though! What a flank by Moses. I'm pretty sure he came all the way around from Banana right yep, there, if I'm did. not mistaken. And yeah, got in behind apartments and manages to get one frag out of it. That was so sneaky. And now the bomb will get planted. Three on two, the situation with the bomb down. But Finesse drops. TM's going to lurk right through the smoke on him. And they're going to get on for the quick defuse as JDM's going to have to work it out to make plays here. He gets the first frag, but he can't find the angle on the uh, diffuser. And uh, that, uh, that Molotov definitely ate him apart. Actually, I should say incinerary grenade since it's CT sided. But there you we'll go, see. tie point already. Another chance where GDM was forced this time on a three versus one with an AWP. Took it a little bit of a time, uh, a little bit of time to land that shot off on the first one. At least he got the kill. But that's only a hundred bucks there for the AWP, so he's very broke right now. But that's the reason why we don't see him top fragging so much. At least when he, uh, he when it comes to play, where he actually has a chance to utilize his off, he at least gets a kill. But uh, in overall. He's not given a chance to actually get any frags out. So, nonetheless, 14 to 7 is our score in favor of United 5. And Denial is uh, not looking too good right now on attempt. Uh, if they lose this one, it might be tough for them for the last round. Absolutely. TM's going to get a quick double. That time he played very passively, fell back to the front of library there. But finally, Finesse goes back into him. Warden's going to get a double of his own, though. And now it's all Cutler remaining. Once again, they're just getting annihilated. I think they really need to slow it down and pay the pick strategy. This aggression isn't quite working for them. Cutler gets one, but there's Warden to pick up his hat trick. And uh, that's uh, eight rounds unanswered in a row there. And Denial has yet to win a round on the T side this entire matchup. And now it's match point, and they are in a dire situation. Yeah, at least with the bonus money, losing all these rounds so far, they haven't won a single round on the on the first on the second half, sorry. And that means after you lose five, you're always going to get a bonus money of uh, thirty four hundred dollars. So everybody's going to be able to buy, except for JDM, who's forced with small armor because he was at zero moving into this round. Uh, so that means that uh, he's not going to have any needs to support as well. So are they going to go for a desperate push towards B? I think that's going to be the case. Well, desperate is exactly the word of how this matchup is going to have to be because this is it. This is match point, and they are finally working in. They've got XP3 pushed back. The flashes have gone over. Can they make an aggressive play off this? Looks like they're going to fall back, actually, as they get smoked out in the, uh, the push. And that's going to slow things down and allow them to readdress Epic situation over on a Warden and Storm on the right side. Warden's actually looked up toward the apartments as Storm hanging out underneath the balcony. We'll just wait for Denial's arrival. Hayes still working back at the B site, though, as he smokes and flashes. But they're going to smoke off onto the uh, truck side. This might allow for a wrap through Moto, but no TM is there. And he gets the first one onto Finesse. But JDM responds into him. He's not going to push through CT spawn. They know they're there. And that allows for them to just sit around in front of Library and allow Hayes to work back from Banana. Hayes doesn't get that first kill through the smoke, though. And if he had, it would have been Storm's life. But instead, two kills come the way of Storm. And that would have made all of the difference right now. But it is a two-on-two. -two. Denial on the... Uh, ropes here back against the wall have to make it happen and steal a, a victory out of the jaws of defeat really because this well they've got the bomb down i was gonna say it was looking pretty grim but they are in the site now they do have positioning the bomb is planted and hazed and cutler now just need to set up in good positioning and not play overly aggressive xp3 is going to head straight up truck side as moses is going to work through the apartments that could catch them out if they're not aware but it looks like cutler is looking in that direction we'll see if he spots him but no he looks away at just the wrong time timing it's a please. game of inches man it's a game of inches and he looked the wrong way hazed is going to make xp3 pay though and now it's a one-on-one -on -one. an 80 80 duel moses jumps down across the truck and hazed gets the frag there it is their first round on the t side sure enough the bomb would have detonated anyway and now finally denial gets on the board 15 to 8 they hang on but man at this point they're playing for consolation i won't say it's over until it's over but it's uh, it's definitely not looking good 
could still be over. Even though United 5 lost that round, uh, Denial were, like, very broke, even though they won that round. So that's why we see two Galils right now for uh, Finesse and for Cutler, respectively. One funny thing, though, is that I don't know why Warden decided to opt uh, for United 5 for that last round. And he was actually opting from the pit out of all places as well. So uh, he should have just kept the rifle and uh, went with the support there with the crossfire setup in A, which seems to be working very well for both teams uh, in this whole game on Inferno. But uh, now it's still going to be the advantage for uh, United 5 as they're pushing towards A. TM and Moses are going to open up early. TM's already got a double finesse and Lucky dropped down to his gun and Storm's going to take down Hayes. That is pretty much it. Good call. And uh, we'll let this one play itself out as Cutler, the only one remaining. It's good that it's early in the season that a stomp like this happens because they can readdress it. And there it is. Matt Dickens closes it out. U5 looking very solid and very organized, unlike a bit last year. So a uh, much more polished team, of course, with Fraud off to do some work and TM in the lineup. They've got more opportunity to practice. And man, oh, man, they look shiny clean like a new pair of shoes tonight. Yeah, putting them 